Hello everyone. I'd like to welcome all of you to today's Gopher Solutions webinar. My name is Tabor Sawatsky. Today's webinar is presented in conjunction with Connected PE and the PE Geek. Gopher is thrilled to be a sponsor of the Connected PE conference being held in Dubai next week. For those of you who are new to our Gopher webinar series, this is a monthly webinar focusing on a variety of physical education subjects and topics. Some of our past webinar topics have included PE teachers presenting on specific activities like assessment, fitness, classroom management, and PE advocacy. Past presenters have included Dr. Robert Pangrazi, Dr. John Medina, and Jean Blades. Our presenters have done a great job of bringing useful topics and information to the field of physical education. Our webinars will almost always occur the third week of the month. And all of today's attendees will receive a certificate of participation for one hour of educational credit. Today's webinar is titled Old School Laps or Modern Apps, Revitalizing Your Curriculum with Dr. Lisa Witherspoon. Before I introduce Lisa, I wanted to mention that you will have the chance to ask questions throughout our presentation. On the right-hand side of your screen, there is a question section. And you can feel free to type any question you might have throughout the presentation. Questions are only visible to me, the moderator. I'll be collecting the questions throughout Lisa's presentation, and we will get to as many of those as we can at the end of the presentation. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing our presenter, Assistant Professor at the University of South Florida, Dr. Lisa Witherspoon. Lisa is an Assistant Professor at the University of South Florida in the Department of Teaching and Learning, where she is part of the Physical Education Teacher Education Faculty. Dr. Witherspoon serves as the director of the USF Active Gaming Research Laboratories and is an international expert on the subject of technology-driven games and exercise with a grounded passion in using technology to reach children in the 21st century. In addition, she serves on national committees and advisory boards related to physical education, technology, active gaming, sports, and fitness concepts. She also serves as the PE Central Active Gaming Managing Editor and has been elected as an inaugural iTeach Fellow at the University of South Florida to assist future teachers and current faculty in using technology in the classroom. Dr. Witherspoon is in the Virginia Tech University Hall of Fame, Catawba Valley Hall of Fame, Newton Conover Hall of Fame, and was inducted into the ACC Legends Class of 2011 for women's basketball. She has designed and implemented various basketball camps all over the country to help young athletes acquire the fundamental skills necessary to feel confident and competent to progress in movement development. Her continued passion is to meet generations where they are in terms of interests and desires in order to help guide individuals in gaining and or maintaining physically active lifestyles. At this time, I will turn it over to our presenter. Lisa, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Tabor. Um, good morning to some, good afternoon and evening to others. Thank you so much for, for joining us here. I'm um, trying to discuss a, a few ideas on how we can use uh, technology to revitalize your curriculum and your physical education program. Um, I want to start by saying uh, technology is, is definitely here to stay. We, we know it's only becoming more pronounced and becoming used in more and more applications in our physical education programs and in the education model uh, in its entirety. The one thing we also know is that there are many forms of technology that can be used in our physical education programs, anywhere from the gizmos and gadgets, where it's heart rate monitors, accelerometers, pedometers, to extra gaming or active gaming equipment, video capturing devices, and then apps or applications as we use on smartphones and uh, even multiple various uh, tablets that we may have. This particular we webinar will completely focus on the use of apps. With that being said, the importance of this webinar, I feel as sometimes some of you might be very comfortable using technology while others may just beginning, be beginning to learn how to use technology and when you think about apps, because there's thousands and thousands of new apps coming out every month, it becomes a little bit overwhelming to figure out where to start and which apps maybe to use that would best suit your program. So this webinar will also discuss the considerations 
uh, you would possibly think about before choosing an app for your particular program. And then we'll dive in and talk a little bit more about specific quality physical education apps that might be of good use or at least a good stepping stone to begin your process of learning how to use apps in your program. The saying there's an app for that has really become, it, it's, it's, it's become such an important phrase because it's really true. Just about anything we want to do in our classroom today, there is a particular app that could be effective and efficient for you as a teacher. We talk about apps that can help us take attendance. It can assist us in, in inputting our grades or being able to communicate our grading with administration. There are apps that help monitor children's behavior. There are apps that can simply help us play music in the background without having to have remote control or some sort of device to be able to turn the music off and on. There's also apps that if you're not comfortable teaching specific contents that are able to assist you in, in that direction. And then if we go into presentations, there's apps that help us design better presentations than just the typical power, power, um, PowerPoint mode. Uh, one of my favorites is the way we're able to use it with our teachers now and being able to communicate with parents. And we'll talk about that further. And then video capturing, which has become extremely popular in secondary settings and, and those that use apps for coaching. When we talk about how to even consider an app for your particular classroom, number one, there are plenty of free or inexpensive apps that will meet your needs and goals. So it doesn't need, you don't need to spend a lot of money to find certain apps that might make your, your program more effective and something that just makes it exciting for the students. A lot of teachers have a problem saying, well, if I want an app for this, how, how do I find it? And in any phone, uh, there, there is an app store that you would go into. And I try to tell teachers you basically use it as you would Google. So you find your most keywords. Uh, at this point, it might be physical education. It might be physical activity. It might be fitness. If you're wanting video capturing, you would type in those words. And then you're going to get a plethora of those apps that are available. The most important thing is to make sure you don't go in, get overwhelmed, and just start purchasing quite a few apps. You have to understand as a teacher, what am I looking for right now in my program that would make it more effective or more efficient and more exciting that's also developmentally appropriate. Going with that, developmentally appropriate, and in every program, it doesn't matter what state, what country you may be in, there are certain standards that are aligned with what your objectives might be for a program. So the most important question is always to make sure that when you're trying to choose an app or you're thinking about including an app, is it appropriate? Is it developmentally appropriate? Is it supposed to support my standards? And is it going to help me accomplish those objectives by, by the end of my lesson? The next thing I like to say is make sure everyone is reading the reviews. I have downloaded quite a few apps. I have gone through thousands of reviews on apps. And, and sometimes the app looks like it would be beneficial, but when you get into the reviews, it's not effective. It's not at all what the teachers are thinking and becomes very disappointing. Going back to what I had mentioned before, before purchasing an app or downloading an app, you also need to have a plan of what you're going to use the app for. Just because it looks fun and just because you think the children are going to enjoy it or it might make part of your job easier does not mean that it's going to work out the way you think it is. It does not mean that it's developmentally appropriate. So you have to have in mind how would this fit into my lesson plans, how would this fit into my unit plans before you would spend the money or, or the time downloading and learning about this particular app. And last and least, I like to use it as the two E's. An app has got to make it more effective and efficient in your program. The one great thing about apps that a lot of teachers get scared of change or how to learn to use an app is that they, they don't realize apps can also be something very benef beneficial for the teacher, not just your students. It can make you spend less time and make things go quicker in your program to where this is something that helps you not just something that's exciting for the students to be involved with. 
So let's go into some categories. Uh, I, I think this part's important, as I don't think a lot of teachers understand how many different categories of assistance they could have by simply learning about various apps. One, let's talk about music, especially in elementary programs. We use music for quite a few things. We use them for our beginning activity before a lesson begins. We call them instant activities here in Florida. We use them as stop and go signals to begin and to have them stop when the music goes off or they start an activity when music comes on. We use it when we teach dance lessons. We use it just in the background to where when they're involved in certain things, all kids like to move and wiggle, so it's a great opportunity for that. There's a couple of apps here I, I've listed, and there's quite a few more, uh, and this is where it gets complicated. It's impossible to keep up with all of them on a day-to-day -day basis because so many new apps come out every week. But two of the most popular I have found, uh, my students have found at this point, there's an app called Tones, and that's for an iPhone, and an app called RingDroid for an Android phone or tablet. And these allow you to splice music. So if you have music in your library already downloaded on your phone, you can use these apps to, let's give an example, play a song for 10 seconds or 15 seconds, and then you can pause it to where it just automatically goes off, and then it can start back up in the next 10 to 15 seconds. So kids can stop, start, and continue on in their activity. So those are just a, a couple of examples with the music. The thing I really like about the music apps is when I was teaching years and years and years ago, I had a remote control. Sometimes the batteries wouldn't work. Sometimes I wasn't facing the, the radio or the music box in the correct way and I would have a hard time getting it to start and stop. I would have to walk over, turn it off manually. These type of apps completely relieve you of any of those things. So if you're one that uses music quite a bit in your classroom or would like to use music more, but you found it to be a little annoying and how to get it to function effectively, these types of apps will help you in that situation. The next one. One of my favorites at, at the moment, um, Class Dojo, it's really growing uh, with, with experience from teachers using it. I know here in Florida it has. But Gla Class Dojo is fantastic. It's basically an app that allows the teacher to send out information to where parents can log in and they can actually watch their, their students, watch their kids from feedback from the teacher throughout the day or they can check it every two days. But instead of the teacher feeling like they have to pick up the phone to call a parent, even to provide them with good information because of all the numbers. Some of us are teaching five, six, up to 2,000 students in a week. This allows us to quickly go in and show a positive related behavior or one that might need some work. That way the parents are able to look and see what their children are doing and either get them back on track or also praise them for how wonderful they've been in your classroom. And once again, it's extremely hard to communicate with, with parents uh, th throughout the school day. So this allows us a quick way of being able to reach out and letting the parents feel more involved with our program. It also, as I had mentioned, because it tracks, the one thing I like to tell my teachers is I don't want you to use Class Dojo for negative behaviors all the time. We really want to make sure parents are understanding the good that, that our children are doing so we can boost them up and really provide feedback with that positive behavior that they're, they're having in class. Emails get sent out to parents to update them, or like I said, they can track it manually anytime they log into their computer. And the kids like it because you see in the picture there, they, they look like little characters. The kids can go in, they can change their character, they can update it, they can switch it, so they can even log in and do something with their own account to make it feel like it's their own little avatar. QR codes, uh, another very popular um, activity. Many of you already at this point have probably have a QR code scanner as an app on your phone, but really don't use it for much of anything but possibly going to a restaurant and scanning a QR code for coupons or something of that nature. That's really been the most popular. But in the education setting, especially physical education, this has become extremely popular. 
we have put together so many scavenger hunts. Uh, it could be related to fitness principles. It could be just random clues, sending them around different areas in the playground. You can use them as a review of a unit, um, some sort of rewards activity for them. And the, the thing that scares a lot of teachers, once again, is how to create them. If you went to Google or to Bing and you typed in how to create QR codes or create a QR code, the first one or two links you can click on, and you ba all you do is basically type in what you would like for that QR code to say when it's revealed. So I would sl simply put in, uh, do 10 jumping jacks while you're singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. To make it fun, I press create, and up it pops. So then at that point, you can choose just to simply print it out or however you would like to do it to display it. They are extremely simple to create. There are also multiple websites of physical education teachers at this point that have already created quite a few ideas of activities using QR codes. So you can simply find those on the Internet, and you can take them and use them to get you started until you feel more comfortable. But this is certainly a fun activity. Some of my students have used it to uh, create uh, bulletin boards where students will come through and they'll scan the QR codes on the bulletin boards and it will have certain things with activities they're doing or reviews in the classroom or once again, like I said, the scavenger hunt. So a very simple way of using technology that's fun and creative with the students as well. This next one, I muscle too. There are quite a few of these. Uh, right now that, that are out that are available for download. I like this particular one. It's in the same category of it's good for elementary. It's also good for secondary. You can choose how intense or how complicated you want to get involved with this particular app. For little ones, they're able to look at the, at the, at the different videos. They're able to go through the app and actually identify muscles. And it can be as simple as a bicep or a quadricep, and then it can get more intense when you get into high school, middle school and high school, where it's a little more detailed about the body that might be more complicated for younger children. The great thing about this app that I love for, for all ages, it provides them with ideas of if I'm wanting to get that muscle stronger and healthier, what are some ideas that I can, that I can do? What are some activities that, that I can use? And so instead of you having to come up with all of the different activities, the apps assist you with that, that content. Um, I believe this one is, uh, might have gone up $1.99 or $2.99, something of that nature. Uh, that was iMuscle 1. But it is one once you go in and you read the reviews, they have a video for you to look at to give you a better idea when you go to the website that, it, that it's on. And you can see if that's a fit that you would want to use in a fitness unit possibly an elementary or even a weight training unit or class when you get into secondary levels. Team Shake I use in my class with my undergraduates quite a bit. Uh, the neat thing about Team Shake is that it's kind of an arbitrary, unbiased way of putting kids together in teams. So instead of you trying to put together, you know, I'm, I'm going to put these people together and I'm going to put these students together, and then kids arguing over what group they're in. This is a way you literally can upload your class list, and even your teacher can log in and simply upload her class list for you and add you as the instructor so you don't have to type in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names that you might have. And then you, you just literally pick how many teams you would like. So in the picture here, it looks like four teams if you want to five teams, six teams, you're doing modified games, many sided games, you put in how many teams you would like it to create, and it pops up those teams. So the kids are able to look, you know, I'm red, so red is over here, blue is over here, and they're able to non-biasly be able to work together in a group. The neat thing about this, too, is especially uh, with, when you're dealing with younger children, and it even goes into high school, if Tommy and Johnny just do not work well together in a group. And every time you want to get in groups, they're wanting to be in the same group, but they're too competitive, they end up not getting along. You can go into your settings and Team Shake, and Team Shake will never put those two on the same team. 
so you're able to have controls within it that allow you to pick and choose teams um, that is unbiased. And like I, there's more than just Team Shake. This happens to be the easiest that I found, uh, the one that I, I have just gravitated towards, and it seems to be working with, with my students when they go in as interns in the school. Next is an app called Squirk It. It's become more popular. It's a really neat idea, and, and really when, once you download the app, you see the picture there. These are your options of activities that it's going to provide. So if you're wanting to do an instant activity at the beginning of class and you want to come in and say, today we're going to do cardio, you get to choose whether it's uh, easy level or it's more complicated level. So you get to choose the level of what kind of activities it's going to provide you with. And then it's five minutes at a time. So you can choose if you want it five minutes or ten minutes. It explains the activity. It lets the kids get up and moving. And the, the thing I like about it is I, I tend to get stuck in the, using the same ideas of activities over and over again that I think are going to be appropriate for children. And this provided me with a, a, a lot more ideas that are appropriate and the kids like them because they're different. So you see here they have cardio, they have strength, they have stretching, and they have yoga. So one of my favorites is going into yoga, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second, where I'm not very comfortable teaching yoga myself. Uh, I, I, I have never really gravitated towards yoga, but it has become more popular. It's extremely healthy. It's a lifetime fitness activity. Older kids are especially getting into it right now, so it's a great way to provide a warm-up that they're able to follow that's appropriately discussed that you don't have to understand all the terms for that particular content. So that's work it, and it's just a, an idea for a quick, you know, uh, get them up, get going, or if you're doing a complete cardio unit or fitness unit, it's a great way of, of interjecting new ideas for activities. Coach's Eye, this is a video capturing app um, many of you might have, have heard of this. There's several more that are available right now. I really like this particular app. I use it a lot with, with my stepson. Uh, he plays baseball. He's 14 right now. And it's, we're able to take a video of him at the plate, and we are able to put side-by-side -side videos, comparisons of when he was really solid at the plate and then when maybe he popped one up to right field, was behind it, and show him maybe how his elbow drops, you know, maybe how his weight balance is off or weight transfer. And you can do this. We use this in the classroom with our students if we're working on skill development to where we can stop and say, what were the cues we were talking about today, and what do you notice when you see yourself performing this particular task? And it is amazing how much children love to see themselves, number one, but number two, how they can typically pick out, once they see them doing something wrong, they can pick it out. So it's a very effective way of letting them visually see what is going on. Also with coaches, it has become very popular to where they can help their athletes. And the neat thing about Coach's Eye is you can draw all over it with your finger. So you can point to things as you see in the picture. You can show, hey, this was supposed to be a triangle with the arms. Do you see anything here? point of things so they're actually able to see you editing this as you're talking with the, the student or with your team if you're showing something of that nature. So this is a really neat idea. It also has audio commentary so you actually can talk into it and send that particular clip to the parents. So that is really neat also because the parents can then receive it and say, oh wow, this is really cool. Look, look what Tommy was doing. I see what he needs work on. So we'll talk about that. So it's a very neat app that you can use for video capturing. Once again, these categories I'm, I'm talking to you about, this is not the only one out there. So please, if you go in and you see other ones, play around, read the reviews, see which one works best for you and for your particular students. Then we move into basic indoor, indoor classroom type activities where if you're just wanting to really promote physical activity in the classroom, not necessarily your classroom, but throughout the school day. I know many countries have gone from kids, them wanting kids to sit for hours at a time. So we're really trying to help 
the classroom teachers improve being able to get kids up and moving, even if it's just for two to five minutes at a time. There are a couple applications here. Brain Breaks by Hop Sports is one. You can simply Google, Google that through the Hop Sports website, and it pops right up. And it's activities they can stand right up beside their desk. If you're in a snowy environment or you have a rainy day situation in the physical education class, it's also beneficial there. Go Noodle is one you can simply Google and look up, www.gonoodle.com. Super cute, really cute characters. Every time the class finishes a particular dance, they have yoga dance, they have all kind of hip hop dance videos, then your little character grows and you earn points and they love to see their character grow and change. That's an easy one. Cosmic Kids Yoga is another great one that you can Google. And one example, um, uh, one of the characters of the actors dresses up as Princess Leia, and she's putting them through all kind of different yoga moves and, and activities. Um, and then you have Just Dance videos that a lot of teachers have begun looking up. That is the video game that typically goes with, you know, the Xbox Connect or the Wii. But you can Google the videos, project it, and the kids can follow along. So that's just a few ideas for different types of activities you can use on rainy days or if you have to be indoors here in Florida, we don't have anything called a snowy day. Uh, we're out, outdoors all year long, but for, for other areas, they become very popular when you do have to be inside. And here are just a few more to finish up with. Uh, once again, if you're into coaching or if you want to have a particular time or if you're a PE teacher that we don't really promote scoring when we're in competition levels uh, here in Florida, but if you're scoring based on good deeds or maybe an effective objective where you're congratulating the children for being responsible or handling equipment well, if you're trying to pr provide points, there are quite a few. There's Bracket Maker to help with organizing some sort of tournament. There's Scoreboard that will simply look like a real scoreboard where the kids, if you project it, they can see that. Um, there's all kind of timer tools where you don't have to have a stopwatch. It's right there on your phone. And there's even timer tools where if the kids are running a mile or you're running kids in a certain pattern where some start at a different time than the other group, it helps you keep up with the splicing uh, of when the kids start and stop. There's beep tests that help to where it's almost, it provides a cadence so you don't have to have an old school cadence to, uh, to keep things, you know, uh, on, on track. And then the coin toss, I find with the little ones, they just love it. It's like in a football game, like flip a coin to see who gets the ball first or gets to go first. And it literally just the kids tap it and it flips a coin up, you know, on your screen, whether you're using a tablet or projecting it out onto uh, a wall or a whiteboard. And it looks like it's just fair and square. We, we tossed a coin and, and here you go. And then I had mentioned the yoga class. Uh, there's, there's about four or five really good yoga apps out there. Yoga class is good. Um, with children, a lot of times I feel like they gravitate more to the, uh, the, the Cosmic Kids Yoga app that I discussed that you can Google and learn more. Yoga class is great. It actually provides you with all of the definitions of what the movements really are. So you as a teacher can educate yourself and then begin to learn how to teach yoga. So that's definitely an, an interesting one. It provides you, you can be on a beach doing them. You can, you, you can be in an office setting. You can be in a classroom setting. You can choose your setting. And then we have anything from if you're using heart rate monitors, there's apps to be able to display that information and also gather the information from downloading the heart rate monitors to where you're able to use that with parents or administration. And then these next things are more, um, well, teacher's assistant is going to be more of an in-depth, a little more expensive app, but it's going to assist you with everything we talked about at the beginning with attendance, behavior. It's a little more in-depth of you using it as a complete tool for you. And when you go in and read the reviews, there's some that are good, there's some that have been disappointed. It wasn't what they, they really wanted. And then the last two, the educations and explain everything are more presentation tools. So if you're 
trying to put together a presentation, maybe for the PTA or a fundraiser or something out there where you want to create a presentation and put it on a website that you may have created for your, for your own program, these are really neat ways of presenting. And some of them act as whiteboards to where you can upload pictures just with a, a quick upload. You can move them around. You can turn them sideways. You can write on it. Really neat, really neat presentation methods if you're trying to find something a little more professional that's not a simple PowerPoint uh, for some sort of event that you're planning or, or planning to use on your website. So as we wrap up here, there, there's good news and then there's more informative news. Uh, as we talked about, th there are so many apps out there for you to be able to choose from that's not going to break the piggy bank. Um, they're also user-friendly for the teachers and the students. Most of the time, the students are going to be able to click on an app and figure it out. That would take teachers hours because they're just naturally driven to figure this out. And because many of the apps are cheap, you know, we're talking 99 cents to 199, or they're free, there's really no excuse for you not to feel comfortable going in and saying, hey, I'm going to download a free app. If I don't like it, I won't use it, and I'll delete it. That's completely fine. The informative news, however, is no one can tell you what app you need for your classroom. Only you can choose that. Every teacher is different. Every teacher might gravitate towards something a little more than, than another teacher. Or it may be their traditional methods are working just completely fine in one area, but they're really struggling in another area. And that's where you will have to have a plan in your mind of the type of app you want to explore, read the reviews before downloading, especially if it's going to cost money. Once you press buy with that $0.99 cent or $1.99, you don't get a refund for that. So that's why I really stress it gets very frustrating when I hear teachers, you know, I just spent $9, $10 last month on these apps, and I, I, I don't even want to use any of them. That's where it can get very, very expensive. It always crap crops up on you. And last but not least, the, the most important thing, I think, for any teacher to understand if you're just starting out using apps, because there are thousands and thousands to choose from, is make sure you start with baby steps. It's okay if you start with something very, very simple and decide how you might fit that into your curriculum, have a plan, and then explore it. Once you get used to how you're going to disseminate the information, because not all classes provide all students tablets, not all classes will they allow their students to use smartphones in the classroom. So if you only have one or two tablets or a smartphone or you know, one iPad, you might have to use it in the form of stations. That way you're maximizing participation. You're not using one tablet for 20 kids to sit around trying to figure out the activity, but you're able to maximize it by using it in a station-like setting. And that's, that's really the most important thing, is making sure it's going to be developmentally appropriate. So thank you so very much. Uh, I will take any, any questions that, that you may have at, at this time. My contact information is here. If you have any further questions and want to reach me directly, I will be glad to, to assist or help any way possible. Thank you so much, Lisa. And a reminder to everybody, if you do have questions, the right-hand side of your screen, you can type anything that you have uh, questions for Lisa. And the recorded version of the webinar will be available on the Gopher website in our webinar area. Um, one question for you, Lisa. Um, the Class Dojo app, is there a cost associated with that? And you might have mentioned it already. There, there, if, you, if you download the original Class Dojo, it is free. If you and, get premium access, you go into an extended access typically when an entire school yeah. ends up taking that app over. That's right. when if you wanted to do more specific things that you would you would pay a little more for that. Okay. And in your experience, what have you seen from like administrator support for something like that? That seems like something that, you know, I know parent engagement is a big deal with, with schools and with teachers. Um, do you see a lot of the you know, the, the schools or 
I don't know, even district level, saying this is how we're going to communicate with parents through an app like that? Yes, we, we have seen, seen quite a bit here here in Florida, and there's a couple of other states where they have mandated it in their entire school district. Okay. That way all the teachers have it, everyone's on the same page, the parents are able to get quite a bit of communication. One of my best girlfriends, her son's school uses it at this point, and it, she she's hilarious. She goes in every day, and she's mm -hmm. able to track everything that goes on with him, the good, the bad, the indifferent, and it's something that's really helped her with communicating with him at the end of the day on different things that he did great or that he may need work on. And the administrators really like it because the, because of the, the input with the parents. And yeah. physical education programs sometimes are not often viewed as being, you know, the, the top program we're worried about with our kid or the top class. So when you're able to reach out and keep the parents informed on what's going on, it provides a sense of respect that has yeah. really helped a lot of physical education teachers. Cool. Um, kind of a, a hardware question. Um, do you typically use your own iPhone or do you use an iPad or is there, you know, have you found that the phone just works better because it's more portable or the iPad is really necessary because you need the size of it for certain things? Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, no, fantastic. The one app that I will say, anytime I'm using Coach's Eye, it's much better on an iPad because of the size of it, but typically the other apps, I can actually, I, I use um, another type of app called Air Server that anything, any app I have on my phone, I connect it right into a computer that can project anywhere, or it can be bigger, it can be on an iPad, so that way I don't have to carry around an iPad anywhere. Sure. So I use a combination of the two, but it really depends on the app you're using and what's easiest for the, the phone, the music apps, the phone definitely. That, right. That's the easiest way. Okay, good. Um, question specifically to the Team Shake app. Um, you know, if, the, if it's needed or desired, can you do all girl groups or all boy groups? Yeah, yes, you can. You can go into settings and you can completely set that up with who you want on, on certain teams and who you don't want to be involved. So if you want to separate genders, you can do that. Okay, all right. And then I know one of the apps you had um, talked about doing split times and laps and things like that. One of our uh, attendees is asking a specific question about um, a, a before school jogging club where students track laps and then record them to earn fitness tokens. Um, would that app do that or is, are there any other ones that you're aware of that there, might be There good? are quite a few and off the top of my head because it is not one when I prepare teachers, I don't really use th those apps as much. My teachers have, have gone in and found them and used them. But if you went into your app store and you typed in the, the keywords, uh, whether I saw one question about fitness tracking or uh, laps, uh, time, timing laps, they will come up specifically. And then in the description, it will say it will splice laps. It will be able to do this. It, it can you know time one group and then start another group. So they do specifically say that. And I have read about three myself. Okay. Uh, so I, I know that they're out there. Great, great. Well, we will um, wrap up. Just a reminder again that Gopher will be at the Connected PE Conference in Dubai next week. For anybody who's planning to attend that, uh, be sure to stop by and say hi. And we thank you, Lisa, so much for your presentation. Um, always great stuff. Join us again for our Gopher Solutions webinar. It happens the third week of every month, and we hope to see you again. Thank you. Th thank you.